the Reverend uh, Jeremy's here. I know you're always talking about you know Netflix put all these uh uh uh, uh, uh nine point one point six Atmos mixing studios together. I met one of the guys. His company was hired to do that, right? Um, at this music studio I went to, and they put all these Atmos uh, mixers mixing things together. And I was talking about you know our audience and how they're uh, not happy with most of the Atmos mixes movies and yada yada. And he said it's you know, and I said you know you know time uh, budgets. Those were the two main things. And he says, actually, there's also another factor. Is all these people doing the 7.1 mixes don't want to do anything else in Atmos. They are stuck in their ways, and they are essentially lazy. And they don't want to learn anything new. And they don't want to do anything that's going to cause them to have more work to get whatever the, the, del- the deliverable delivered. So there's another, there's another thing from someone in the, you know, who actually put these Atmos mixing rooms together for Netflix. Um, yeah. A bunch of lazy fucks out there. Hey, we got a, a message from FOMO. He says, I think this is probably re- in reference to the uh, BEQ, base EQ. He says, I've spoken to mixers as well as home release mixers, and they do not remove any bass or cut cut it off. And, and that might be true, but keep in mind, like, when uh, Chana and I make an Atmos mix, we have to adhere to the minus eighteen LUFS. Is that I right? Do that. I don't do that shit. You know why? Because I'm not. I'm not delivering to to Apple. Okay, music. but I'm saying but if you were delivering, you'd have to adhere to this mi- minus eighteen LUFS standard, and you don't want to go over it because they're going to say, hey, "Hey, go redo this." It's not. Yeah. But yeah. then when Netflix gets a hold of it, they're also going to do something to it. Yes. Right. So. If you notice, like their stuff is louder than what we might give a download to because they do some stuff afterwards. So maybe mixers, maybe certain mixers don't do it. Maybe, maybe some do, and maybe Netflix and the, you know, those companies are doing something to the mix. Yeah. There, uh, what's funny is I talked to an Atmos mixing or sorry, mastering engineer, and I was like, so what, what is your process? Like, what do you do? Once you get the ADM deliverable, that's in the negative 18 LUFS. And he's like, oh, I just, I open up the Dolby Atmos um, assembler app, which Joe and I already have. And um, he boosts, he uses that EQ and that limiter, and then he just runs it through that. So, so, so like, depending on what platform you're in, they're, they're all going to do something different. But at the end of the day, the tools are just the same tools that we mm-hmm. have. Um, so... Yeah, Man, yeah, stuff. Yeah, I mean, I think he's FOMO. You're you're saying personal preference. I'm going based on this one particular instance where I did record what happened in the theater. You know, for this particular movie, so it's only one one case, but it, it's totally. It was a totally different experience when I heard the Disney Plus version. Like, really, didn't have any of the bass. So. Mixer told me that most movie theaters cannot handle anything below 60 hertz. That's why many theaters have the shaky seats. Why? Mm, uh, we, we're both in SoCal. Uh, there's some, We have some pretty good theaters, though. There's some theaters that can... 60 hertz is weak. You know what I mean? <laughs> nah, the theaters I've been to, they can definitely go below 60 hertz. Come on. They got a bunch of, like, 18s in the front. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, almost 10 years and so little improvement. Yeah. Yeah. 2014. It's about time then. Always going to need a new influx of cash. Well, you know, uh, one of the interesting, I, I was talking to that guy, Paul from Genelec, who's, uh, one of the, you know, tech guys there. And I was telling him like some of my approaches to mixing, uh, Atmos. And you know what he said? It's like, we got to get you on a panel. I'm like, yes, yes, you should. You should. So who knows? Maybe next year at NAM I'll be. <laughs> That's your dream, right? You want to be on a panel. At NAM. Panel is not come true. Oh, all oh. these fuckers! <laughs> like, yeah, you guys don't know what you're doing, bro. Oh Do man. <laughs> I mean, you what... can Jay Z and just go up there. Yeah. Thank right. you for allowing me on this panel, but none of you guys know what you're talking about. <laughs> it's like you guys are, <laughs> you guys are mixing on these big speaker arrays, assuming everybody's going to listen to it on headphones. Like this is, there's a disconnect here. <laughs> Why don't you mix it for a speaker array? 
and say maybe you could talk about room nodes. Oh yeah. Yes. Oh no 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 nodes no uh, no nodes nodules. Uh, <laughs> Momo said in the comment, What's room that? nodules. <laughs> nodules, yeah. Uh, this doesn't mean you shouldn't add base to your personal preference because screw creators and, and ten who knows what their agenda really is. Um, make sure to check out our audio only version of the podcast at anchor.fm forward slash daily hi fi or just go to your favorite podcasting service and search for daily hi fi.